Hello again, Internet. Welcome back to Instant Screaming, your source for quick reviews of horror movies that you can sit down and watch on your own tonight in the comfort of your own home. Today, we have Hush and the Voices. It's a bit of an ironic pair. Now, Hush is going to be available on Netflix and is directed by one of my favorite horror directors, Mike Flanagan. Hush is the story of a deaf woman who lives in the middle of the woods and her home becomes invaded slash assaulted by just this random crazy guy who has no real motivation. He's just insane and wants to kill some folks. Hush is probably one of the most consistently tense and creative home invasion movies I've ever seen. And I do say that uh, with the full acknowledgement that I'm not a huge fan of the home invasion genre. It does tend to be a little bit sometimes lacking in motivation and uh, sometimes needless needlessly gory. But Hush is really none of that. The, uh, the protagonist ha has appropriate moments of hopelessness and panic, but also appropriate moments of agency and attempts to, to, to fight back. And the stalker seems appropriately unhinged, but not completely insane. He also does a really good job of planning ahead for things that, that seem like they're going to happen in ways that don't just seem contrived and convenient. But on the flip side of that, it's not as terrifying as Mike Flanagan tends to be. You know, maybe just because I'm a much bigger fan of supernatural horror and that's where Flanagan normally works, and that's where he gets to do way more of his normal reality-bending craziness. And he was sort of constrained by the laws of the real world in this movie. But it does seem very petty to complain that a movie isn't nearly as scary as other movies that the director has made. If you do want to pick out some weird conveniences, there's a scene when the killer first arrives at the house where the protagonist is throwing out a poorly cooked meal and she just so happens to never actually glance at all in the direction of the window. She stays completely and perfectly on this 180 degree line, almost like a filmmaking class, and just never deviates, never, you know, just loops or, you know, brushes hair out of her face and happens to see this guy in the window. That just, that one little bit felt a little silly and a little convenient, but you have to try really hard to find something like that to complain about in the movie. So, yeah, a home invasion movie about a deaf mute. Go watch it. And now switching to somewhat of a polar opposite film, we've got a movie about a schizophrenic who hears voices. In fact, the movie's called The Voices, starring Ryan Reynolds. You should be able to find this one on Amazon Prime Streaming or Hulu. And this is, this is one of those really weird cases where I can tell you objectively that this is a good movie. The premise is pretty clever. The writing is amazingly witty, very clever. But I just don't like it. So I do mean that that really puts me in two minds about the movie because I really loved how it played with the unreliable narrator. How whenever, you know, Ryan Reynolds was the point of view character, things in the world around him, just in the set, looked one way, but when it was anybody else, it looked a completely different way. And, you know, the plot and the story and the evolution has these really interesting moments of darkness and pathos and poignancy and how actually entertaining it was to see Ryan Reynolds have long conversations with himself acting as the voices of his pet dog and his pet cat. But as much as I actually liked and enjoyed all of that, <laughs> dear me, I just could not handle the amount of, of cringe that was going on and that's not the movie's fault. It did exactly as it was trying to do and accomplished exactly what it set out to be. Too good of a job was done making the character painfully awkward to watch. I just felt so uncomfortable watching it. And that's unfortunate because I can tell you that it's a good movie if you can handle the awkward cringeness. But again, folks, it seems like we've just met, but now we must part ways. If you feel like continuing this conversation, you've seen either of these two movies, do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of them. If you can think of any other movies that you would like to see on this show or 
full on modern horror, also leave those in the comment below and uh, let me know. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos to build environment. And if you are feeling particularly awesome and do want to support this show or modern horror, please check out our Patreon campaign here. Anyway, cheers, folks.